Hello everyone and welcome to this webinar on rapid prototyping for electric motor control design. My name is Manuel Fedou and I am an application engineer for electrification at Speedcode. Together with me is Shirak Patel, application engineer at MathWorks. As an introduction, let's see how you likely develop electric motor controls and how you can benefit from real-time simulation and testing. You typically want to get from an early design ID to deployment in production. As a simple example, let's say you design a controller for your new electric motor. If you develop the controller in Simulink, you can quickly iterate and test your designs against a simulated plant, all performed in desktop simulation. But to prove your design against real dynamics, you should also test it with a real motor. And you can do so with real-time testing for RCP, short for Rapid Controller Prototyping. From your simulating model, you generate a real-time application and deploy it to a SpeedGoat target machine, which directly connects with motor sensors and actuators through the analog and digital interfaces, but also communication protocols. Once you have tuned and verified your controls, you could use the embedded coder to generate embedded code for your microcontroller from the same controller model. Instead of proceeding immediately with physical testing using real motor, you front load motor controller validation with hardware in the loop testing and validate the controller as if controlling a real motor when it is connected to a real time digital twin of it. So today we'll focus on rapid controls prototyping. But why is this stage so important? For many teams, the first logic step is connecting the physical prototype, like a real power inverter and electric motor, to a control unit. However, making the first working controller prototype presents following challenges. Defining or designing the embedded controller itself is a challenge and involves committing to design decisions like computing platforms and hardware interfaces very early in the project. With RCP, leverage a flexible platform that enables you to innovate and iterate faster. Then, implementing your algorithms on CPU or on FPGA is time consuming and error prone. So, when using model based design and code generation to a rapid prototyping device, you are benefiting in terms of time and costs. Finally, debugging and tuning on the embedded device is limited and tedious. RCP enables you to log, debug, and optimize your design faster and more easily. Looking closer, we can identify several benefits when adopting rapid control prototyping. Your final product will probably require an embedded board with a microcontroller or FPGA. You will have to select the right chip depending on the size of the code, the switching frequency, and the required I.O. channels. These are many requirements to validate. With rapid control prototyping, you introduce a hardware platform that is independent from the final embedded device. As a consequence, you can find design errors very early in the development phase. Some mistakes can be found also with desktop simulation, but testing on hardware can introduce new variables. Also, your desktop models benefit greatly from RCP because you can compare desktop simulation and hardware testing. For example, you can integrate new components, such as new I.O. channels, without having to redesign the embedded hardware. You can tune parameters and log data using MATLAB and Simulink. You can add communication interfaces by simply using driver blocks, and you keep the focus on the control algorithm. Eventually, you don't have to think about accessing onboard memory and I.O. registers. Now, how can a RCP setup look like for electric motors? There are typically three main components. First, your hardware on the test. In our case, we have an electric drive composed of the electric motor and power electronics converters and perhaps a mechanical load. Second, an RCP platform, including a real-time system where you run a controller together with IO modules supporting data acquisition, signal conditioning, communication with the system under test. Third, a workstation running application software that supports setup and operation 
of the OCP test bench. So, for example, in the demo we will show today, we will use as hardware an electric drive composed of a three-phase inverter and a permanent magnet synchronous motor. In the demo, we run an FOC algorithm deployed to the SpeedGoat real-time target machine that you see in the left side of the video. The connection to the hardware is integrated with IOs such as ADCs, PWM, and encoders. The application is generated at the click of a button. We can either run predefined test scenarios or use the Simulink dashboard to run tests interactively. And we tune, debug, and analyze signals inside the Simulink environment. Now, which technologies are required for RCP? First, you need to connect to your hardware interfaces such as PWM, ADCs, communication protocols are needed, and you need to synchronize all your IO channels. Then, you need a flexible environment to interact with your hardware with capabilities such as data acquisition and validation of signals, workflows using experimental data for motor parameter estimation, and tasks such as I.O. calibration, for example, for ADC offsets. Finally, RCP requires to deploy algorithms such as field-oriented control on real-time platforms based on CPUs or on FPGAs and perform parameter tuning. In this webinar, you will discover how SpeedGoat solutions provide all these enablers. We will first introduce real-time testing with SpeedGoat, then Based on the demo already introduced, we will discuss IO connectivity for electric motor controls, test and measurement workflows, and finally, how to deploy control algorithms. Our real-time simulation and testing platform simplifies your workflow and lets you design and test better controllers and plan models faster. You can innovate and you are not constrained by embedded testing environments or with the hassles of integrating solutions. Benefit from a plug-and-play real-time solution that shields you from interoperability issues. Experience unity of simulation and testing with real-time target hardware, all directly from MATLAB and Simulink. The seamlessly integrated solution is composed of two main components. The first one is Simulink Real-Time, the solution for real-time test and simulation from within MATLAB and Simulink. It comes with several host capabilities that allow you to easily create, control, and monitor your real-time applications. And it serves as your real-time operating system. The second component is powerful and scalable SpeedGoat real-time target computer hardware equipped with I.O. The real-time application created from your Simulink model runs on it together with the Simulink real-time operating system. Each real-time system includes the real-time target machine, I.O. modules configured to your needs, and the SpeedGoat I.O. block set. The block set library allows for connectivity to the hardware. For motor controls, you require fast I.O. and need a certain level of flexibility. You will like configurable I.O. modules and Simulink programmable FPGAs. You can run a variety of high-speed protocols and I.O like PWM, I2C, and encoder interfaces on configurable I.O. modules. Configuration files allow you to set the I.O. capabilities of the I.O. module. I.O. configuration is simple. I.O. and hardware of any kind is represented by Simulink blocks. Placing them in your model and configuring I.O. or protocols is done within Simulink. Simulink driver blocks represent I.O. functionality, so it's basically the same as using a regular I.O. module. You can check I.O. functionalities and pin mappings directly from the driver block. And you can reconfigure I.O. capabilities at any time. Thereby, you can adapt to new needs and optimize your investment. You can use the same hardware for different projects. But sometimes, you will need to accelerate more than the, just the I.O. and protocol. Perhaps, Part of your control algorithms are also required to run at very high rates. This is possible using our Simulink programmable FPGAs. Programmable FPGAs allow you to outsource both part of your control and signal I.O. to the FPGA 
using the HDL Coder workflow from within Simulink. Speedcode provides you with ready-to-program I.O. and protocol driver blocks, and you can get started with hardware-proven examples, so it doesn't necessarily become more complicated. Ultimately, you have more flexibility for your advanced use cases. Several FPGA I.O. modules allow using both workflows, so it's possible to start simple with a configurable workflow and evolve to the programmable one as you go. In this webinar, we are demonstrating the I.O. 397, which will be used as configurable I.O. module as well as programmable FPGA. We have introduced real-time testing with SpeedGoat. Now let's discuss I.O. connectivity for electric motor controls. For motor controls, we need PWM generation, analog digital converters, position sensors such as encoder or resolver, communication protocols, and we need to synchronize IOs and application. For our motor demo, this simple diagram summarizes the interfaces between the control, the drive, and the electric motor on the right. The control algorithm is running in the baseline real-time target machine. This will obtain the rotation from the quadrature encoder sensor. It will also measure the phase current by using analog signals and finally, it will generate PWM signals to the motor drive in order to control the electric motor. We'll configure all interfaces from Simulink. Let's go through the already introduced Simulink model. We are going to see how the I.O. can be implemented in Simulink. For the motor control model, the motor drive subsystem has been filled with I.O.s to the inverter. First, we use the configuration block to select the configuration file for the I.O. 397. From this block, we can look at the pin mapping for the digital and analog I.O.s. This helps us understand the connection to the hardware. Now we can open some driver blocks. For example, digital output blocks that connect directly to specific TTL lines. The PWM module includes advanced options that are typically available in a microcontroller, but we don't have to look at hardware level register. Each PWM channel has two lines and one trigger output. The two lines can be configured as the complement of each other. We can select symmetric or asymmetric patterns, define the deadband duration to avoid short circuits. We can set initial value of the period and duty cycle, and we can vary them during runtime. As an additional safety option to avoid short circuits, we can also prevent the two PWM lines to be high or low at the same time. And finally, we have few options to configure the trigger event, the offline state, and the polarity. For position and speed measurement, we have a quadrature decoder block. For example, for an incremental encoder, you can also use latch mode to synchronize multiple encoders. You can determine position and direction. And we also have Simulink blocks for the ADCs. In many projects, like our example, you need to synchronize PDRM output, ADC sampling, and your controller application. To better visualize, we have the PDRM output in red and the analog input in green. We add a PDRM trigger output that triggers the ADC. At this time, we capture the phase current. This is also important as we can ensure that we capture the current when it is stable, in the middle of the period, always at the same time. For full synchronization, we also have to use the PDRM trigger output as a trigger for the application. So, on the right, we can see the required components for this setup at the hardware level. Note that for very high switching frequencies, like wide band gap, that we can also have a faster switching than the control. It is possible to synchronize analog signals to read only every few PDRM cycles. Often, motor control applications must interface with industry-specific hardware, sensors, or controllers via communication protocols. IO modules support most industrial communication protocols for buses and networks. 
there are now few learnings that we can draw from this chapter on IO connectivity for electric motor. You stay in the same modeling environment, you can rapidly add and configure IO, access all required connectivity for motor controls, and you can synchronize IOs between them and with application software. We now conclude this chapter on IO connectivity. Let's discuss test and measurement workflows. In this chapter, we look at capabilities such as designing experiments in MATLAB, logging data using simulation data inspector or SDI, calibration of IOs, for example, ADC offsets, and plan model calibration using curve fitting or parameter estimation. We will have a look at capabilities such as stimuli generation and recording of real-time measurement data. We will then see how to use experimental data to automatically fine-tune parameters of your simulating model. Let's start by looking at the simulating model used for desktop simulation. Here, we have models for both the field-oriented control as well as the electric PMSM or permanent magnet synchronous motor. If we look inside the plant model, you can see that the motor is modeled as Simscape network. This will provide the right model accuracy with the right parameterization. We have different ways to apply input signals to our model. For now, I want to manually define some custom control inputs. So how can this be done easily? A quick solution is to use the signal editor block. As you can see, we have already predefined multiple signal scenarios, which we can select from the drop-down menu. Adding new signals and scenarios is also easy with the Signal Builder app. Here, I can, for example, add a blank signal and then simply drag and drop points and lines to build the signal. I can also draw free form or use mathematical expressions. And you can always correct the values of each point using the table below. For our test, let's just use the predefined closed down scenario and run it. This will tell the controller to spin up the motor to a constant velocity and turn it off again. How fast the motor slows down depends on parameters such as the motor inertia and various friction coefficients. If we compare the response of our simulating model to the behavior of the real motor, we can identify these parameters to make our plant model accurately mimic the real motor. So, to get the real motor response now, let's switch over to our other model variant. And you can see it looks quite similar with the same inputs and controller subsystem, but the plan model has been replaced with the already mentioned IO interfaces to control the real motor. I set the control inputs to the same cost down scenario and with, with a single click, compile and run the model on the real time target machine. You can see the video of the motor performing the experiment. We then capture the results in SDI. And now I will hand over to Chirac from MathWorks to show you parameter estimation for motor models. Thank you, Manuel. Designing and testing software algorithms using simulations requires a plant model that captures right dynamics of the system. Here in this case, a plant model of a motor and inverter that you can trust while designing your controller. Often, when you compare test results with simulation, you will find some discrepancies between simulation results and experiments. Here in the plot, red line represents rotor velocity from experiment and blue line is from the desktop simulation. You can see that the results match very closely during the active closed loop control However, during coast down phase, results are quite different, indicating that a parameterization of the motor model can be improved. Now we can dig into the motor model and change some parameters such as rotor inertia and friction to match results. However, this process can be time consuming and especially when the more parameters are involved and many experimental conditions need to be analyzed. So let me introduce you to Simulink Design Optimization, which will help us find the right set of values for rotor inertia and friction to match results with experiment. Let's open the Parameter Estimator app directly from the Simulink tool strip. To save us some time, I have prepared a session 
which is linked to the plant model. I have chosen the parameters we want to tune and added the velocity data from the experiment with the motor. If we click plant model response, we also get the simulation output for the current set of motor parameters. There are some additional options we can use to monitor optimization progress and final parameter results. We can also set different optimization methods and algorithms. I'm going to use default settings for this example. To speed up the process, you can also use parallel computing options. Now we are ready to start the optimization process. We can observe the progress in the plot. As the parameters are adjusted, the response of the closed loop simulation gets closer and closer to that of the real motor. At the end, we have a new set of optimized parameters, which we can directly fill into the model, and our motor model now very accurately replicates the real motor's behavior. Back to you, Manuel. Thank you, Shirak. This sounds very useful. To wrap up, you can rapidly switch between desktop and real-time, gather test results in the simulating environment, and optimize desktop models based on experimental data. With this, we conclude test and measurement workflows and we move to control algorithm deployment. In this chapter, we will see how you deploy field-oriented control algorithms and supervisory logic, tune control parameters while application is running on hardware, auto-tune PID gains, offload current control loops to FPGAs to increase closed loop rates up to hundreds of kilohertz, and this while staying in the simulating environment. As a motor control approach, we will be using field-oriented control, or FOC, for these examples. Let me walk you through the simulating model of the controller. It contains an algorithm to decode position velocity, some supervisory logic to switch between various open loop, closed loop, and calibration algorithms, and we have algorithms for open loop velocity control as well as closed loop velocity control and the FOC current control algorithm. Now we will deploy this algorithm together with the already demonstrated IOs to perform rapid controller prototyping and we want to change some control parameters and directly observe the changes in control performance. As we have seen, field-oriented controller employs PID control for the velocity control loop. At this point, we already have a reasonable estimate for the controller gains through testing against our desktop simulation model. Now it is time to verify and fine-tune the control parameters against the real motor. Many parameters, such as the P and I variables, can be adjusted during runtime of the real-time application, and changes don't require a rebuild of the model. I have started the model again and you can see the motor and the live data from the simulation data expander. You can use some dashboard controls as well to quickly change the speed command directly from the simulating canvas which allows us to see the effect of variation in the controller gains. Metalman Simulink also offers you tools for PID tuning and automatically find optimal controller gains to achieve a desired response. For real-time workflows, you can use the FOC Auto Tuner from Motor Control's block set. This will tune the velocity as well as the current control loops. Let me show a setup of motor response before, during and after auto tuning. The auto tuner first excites the motor and we can see the response with initial parameters. Perturbations are injected and evaluated while the auto-tuner performs system identification in the background. Shortly after, the new and optimized control parameters are applied and we can see the drastically improved motor performance. What we have shown is deploying the controls on a CPU, but for some applications, the required sample rate involves using FPGAs. Required sample rates are typically a very good measure for you to decide if FPGAs are required or not. 
If your application has a sample time larger than one millisecond, you have absolutely no problem using Sololy or CPU technology. This is the case for supervisory controls. For sample times, let's say higher than 250 microseconds, we suggest to check for fast IO modules. If you tackle shorter sample times, SpeedGoat will help you to investigate. Quite often, faster IO modules and configurable FPGAs may already help a lot. If sample times are below 50 microseconds, it starts to become worthwhile to run parts of your IO on FPGAs. And for even lower sample times, both algorithms and IO need to run on a Simulink programmable FPGA. So, to achieve faster closed loop sampling rates, we can use HDL coder and deploy control algorithms on an FPGA. In this example, we are going to generate a model with one part that will be deployed to the CPU running at 20 kHz and one part to the FPGA running at 100 kHz. Here is how you deploy a FOC algorithm on a SpeedGoat FPGA using Simulink and HTL coder. The FOC algorithm needs to run at 100 kHz, while the system model runs in that case at 20 kHz. We can run desktop simulation and inspect results in SDI before we move to HDL code generation. We can inspect torque command and response on the top and phase voltages on the bottom. Now let's generate the FPGA application for the FOC algorithm. For this, you can just right click the subsystem in order to start HDL workflow advisor. You define the target as a Simlink real-time FPGA, here the IO397, set reference design, then define interfaces such as TTL lines, ADCs or DACs, or in this case, just the PCIe interface between the FPGA and the CPU. Then we set target frequency and we check the model for HDL code generation compatibility. Then we move to generating HDL code. After code generation, we can inspect the generated HDL code in the code generation report and inspect traceability between model and code. The next step in Workflow Advisor is to call a synthesis tool, Xilinx Vivado, to generate a bitstream, the binary configuration file that is deployed to the FPGA. After that, we can generate a Simulink real-time interface model. When we look at the controller model, we see that it was replaced to interfaces to the FPGA. The FPGA setup block contains the name of the configuration file that was previously generated, which is deployed to the IO397 FPGA module, while the Simulink model is deployed on the CPU of the target computer. Now, we can connect to the target computer and start simulation. Results can be inspected in SDI, and we can compare to the desktop simulation. We can superpose signals, and we see that the FOC implemented on the FPGA still leads to stable control loop and that the difference is very small. With that, we can confirm that the FOC algorithm was implemented successfully on the FPGA, and that was done without leaving Simulink. To recap this section, you can deploy motor control algorithms on CPUs and on FPGAs. No extra programming knowledge is required. You can reach control closed loop rates up to hundreds of kilohertz by adopting the suited computing platform, and you can tune algorithms in real time. We now come at the end of this webinar. Let's conclude with the case of MicroSemi, now Microchip. The Aviation Center of Excellence faced the challenge to meet stringent reliability, size, weight, and cost targets of power core module for electric actuators in the aviation industry. They used both rapid control prototyping and hardware in the loop testing to develop and test intelligent power modules, enabling to push design limits by simulating failures 
optimizing performance and reducing risks associated with early stage tests. The results were successful with the development of a motor drive solution for an aileron application. Let's summarize the key learnings regarding RCP for motor controls with Simulink and Sweetgoat. Connect to electric motor hardware interfaces, monitor, log and post-process data and signals, deploy and tune motor controls algorithms on CPUs or FPGAs, and this while staying in Simulink environment. Many thanks. You want to learn more about real-time controls testing? Then find additional content linked here.